peace and welcome. I am ICC and today we have a top 10 for you. We are taking a look at the Final Fantasy VI soundtrack, released in 1994 and composed by Nobuo Uematsu. All of the selections will be from the OSV, meaning they are direct sounds, and as they were heard in the original game. There are a total of 61 songs that span across a 3 CD set, so there are plenty of tracks to choose from, but we will narrow it down to our favorite 10. <laughs> In at number 10, we have Shadow's Theme. A song that may take inspiration from Percy Face the Virginian theme with its cowboy feel and a western sounding whistle that was typical of cowboy theme songs from shows of that era. Perhaps Nobuo Uematsu found similarities in the lone lifestyle of a wild western cowboy and in the lone lifestyle of a stealth assassin ninja. It would be higher on the list, but due to his solitude, he isn't around that much. And there are other character themes that are just a little bit better. Moving on to number 9, we have The Devil's Lab. A song that may start off a little bit slow, but once it starts, it's one of the busier songs on the soundtrack. There are instruments on top of instruments. Once you reach Kefka's Devil's Laboratory, this song sets the scene for one of the most memorable dungeons in Final Fantasy. The creative track blends well with the atmosphere set by a psychopath conducting experiments to make himself a god. The random nature of the song itself may give you insight into the mind of this madman. Number 8 is the song that plays during the final boss fight of the game, a track titled Dancing Mad. One of the longest tracks in all of Final Fantasy, and definitely the longest in Final Fantasy VI. This track is the culmination of everything Kefka has worked for. There is so much going on that it almost jumps from genre to genre. The almost 20 minute runtime of the song was needed just to match Kefka's big ego. Do you really think Kefka would care about the limitations of a Super Nintendo? He needed a 20 minute theme song. This song is a little low on the list because portions of those 20 minutes can drag on and leave the listener wondering how long the song really is. Lucky number seven is the day after. As this song plays in the game, you wake up to the devastation of Kefka's wrath that nearly destroyed the world. This song fits the somber, apocalyptic mood with its slower melody that inspires the crew, knowing they have a very long road ahead.
This song got in our top 10 not only because it was a turning point in Final Fantasy VI, but Nobuo Uematsu really knows how to compose a track that can shine even on the SNES. The hardware limitation of the SNES was a small obstacle for a composer of his talent. The song itself is called The Day After, but to Kefka, it was Tuesday. In at number 6, we have a song called The Magic House. This track may be the closest thing to a classical piece on our list today. It's in-depth, uses multiple instruments, and has the feel of being an orchestra. excellent song in its own right, and I would put it up against almost any Final Fantasy song. I sometimes catch an instrument or two that remind me of something medieval. I almost think about Castlevania, however, it didn't crack into the top five because the next song is even more memorable. Number five, we have Slam Shuffle, the Zozo theme. Probably the most memorable track in the entire game for me. The song itself was terrific, and as much as Zozo sucked, it couldn't ruin this song. If you have ever obtained the Chainsaw in Final Fantasy VI, then on your way you are met with this track. I think most people can agree that Zozo is not the most fun place to be, plus it was raining all the time. The best thing about Zozo was the Chainsaw, and this theme song. Unlucky number four is a boss theme known as the Decisive Battle. When you hear this theme song kick in, you know it's about to go down. The hype nature of the song and the upbeat tempo make it perfect for any boss battle theme. Put this at unlucky number four because if you die while this song is playing, it means redoing the entire journey and sequence of events leading up to the fight. If you are listening to this song and you notice you only have one phoenix down and your entire party is down, the song can intensify the mood and bring out a certain level of focus. Number three is named Wild West. This song has the name Wild West, but it seems to have some inspiration from the Middle East. The flute has the feel of a traditional Eastern song with the percussion seemingly tribal. This is high on our list because of its uniqueness, the combination of instruments used, and it being such a catchy beat, make it better than your average track. It bounces from one feeling to another, all while keeping the same groove. A unique track goes a long way.
In at number two, we have Tara's theme. The first time you hear this track, you may think of the intro song to Final Fantasy VI, and you would be right. A portion of this melody does appear in the opening, but Terra's theme takes the melody and builds on it. Maybe the intro would have been in this place, but that one seems to waste a lot of time before actually getting into the melody. It's more than two and a half minutes into the song. The slow buildup of that one and the depth of this one put this well above the intro. The Terra theme almost has a send off type of feel, like someone was taken away from you, but you feel confident that it's not over. And this is just the beginning of the battle to get them back. is Kefka's theme. I put this one above Dancing Mad because I feel this one portrays Kefka more accurately. The song almost has a funny feel to it, but then has a sense of randomness, like it could switch at any moment. During some parts, this song also has a sense of an army marching into battle. Now put all of that together and you have the perfect song for a maniac. It's funny, but can turn on you at any second. And then take you to war in the meantime because it does have its dark parts. Fitting for a man who dresses like a jester, makes you brush off his shoes in the desert, laughs like a psycho, and has absolutely no regard for life. So there you have it, our favorite Final Fantasy VI songs. These may not be the best songs on the soundtrack, but they are our favorite. If you have a different top 10, and you probably do, leave it in the comments and I will make sure to check them out. Also, let us know what other soundtracks we should do a top 10 of. We love video game music around here, so we want to do some more videos about game music. Anyways, until then, I am ICC, thanks for watching, peace.